it's a short ass movie. Well, I think uh, I think Scott has a, a film like that he wants to talk about that has never been restored at all. And yeah. considering who directed it, it's kind of shocking that it hasn't been. Do you, wanna, do you have anything else you want to say about those, Keith? No, I just introduced those and recommend both right. of them. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, this is called Idaho Transfer. This is like a public domain DVD from Westlake Entertainment, and there's an even worse one from Miracle Pictures. <laughs> and Milk Don't Creek ever buy any one, DVD probably. from Miracle Pictures because it sounds like they cranked up all the volume <laughs> and put all the distortion in the copy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Idaho Transfer is a really interesting film. It's one of only three that Peter Fonda directed. He Prior to that, he directed The Hired Hand. And after really that, good. he directed Wanda Nevada. I haven't seen mm-hmm. either of those. This is I the haven't only seen one. Wanda. This is the only one he directed. He was not in at all. He doesn't have a cameo mm-hmm. or anything. Um, it's it's about young people who are being projected fifty six years into the future through this transfer device, um, and it it comes with all sorts of health comments. One of the reasons only only the the young people can go on is because it causes kidney failure in older people. And they already know that it causes kidney failure in older people just because from what from their way they study it. And one of their doctors decides he wants to do the transfer anyway, and he ends up dying from kidney failure. So it's he knew the risk. Yeah, he knew the <laughs> he's, he is. Yeah, he very explicitly says he knows the risk, but he he's one of the best anyway. characters. I like that. Actor. Yeah, he is. His name is Dr. Lewis. Um, mm-hmm. So the, it starts off pretty jarringly because like there are no like logos or anything just as soon as you hit play you get a gopher snake huge across the screen and and it's several shots of it before keith carradine finally picks it up and examines. now a gopher snake is not a particularly dangerous snake but it's probably gonna freak a lot of people out because it sure as hell freaked me out because i am not a snake person and I, <laughs> and I suspect i suspect keith carradine was the only one who was actually willing to handle the snake because nobody Nobody else is willing to touch it, even though they talk about the snakes. Keith's game for anything in his movies. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. noticed that. He's he's <laughs> like the only recognizable actor in the film is Keith yeah. Carradine. And mm-hmm. yeah, like everybody else, uh, like like the star of this is Kelly Bohannon. She had a bit part in a, in a film two years earlier, and that was it, which is surprising because she gives a very good performance and yeah. she's very good looking as well. And yeah, she's gorgeous. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there's even a line it's like who'd have guessed my sister was such a looker and she's yeah. actually introduced she's actually introduced with dr lewis removing her braces because they can't have anything metal on them one of the things when when they transfer into this future they the, this guy robert uh had, had like the rims of his glasses burned onto his ears for a bit and he had, and <laughs> they, they, they they don't show it but they talk about it mm-hmm. um so they're they're they didn't have money for that effect yeah they 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 project themselves fifty six years in the future. It says here, I don't know if you can read. It says twenty forty four. There was another mm-hmm. release that gave it have it had a different year. It didn't specify. It looks like it's um, made when it was set. I mean, there's there's a hippie couple at one point in it. I think so it's it in. Does, I think yeah yeah. It's it, either does see, it does seem very or early seventies, but that would oh, make definitely. it twenty twenty nine. But sure. they do they do drop a reference. Um, because there, there is there's fun. There's hilarious. There's a hilarious British uh, VHS release that I showed Henry the cover of. They called the film deranged, and it focused on an element of the plot that's almost entirely off screen. And it says it's set after World War Three. It actually says an echo crisis, and with that pronunciation, mm-hmm. it might just slip right by because yeah. they mean it. They mean an eco crisis. There's a lot of um, exposition in this movie, and it's one of those movies that. It would really annoy a lot of purist writers who are like, show, yeah. don't tell. This is a lot more tell than show. But I mean, I'm yeah, okay with that, but a lot of people aren't, you know? It's fine. This director, this writer is a guy named Thomas Matheson. Haven't found anything for him. I'd really like to know more about this guy. I did find a Thomas Matheson who was a sociologist, but his name wasn't even spelled the same way. But there ha- there are issues with the spelling of the credits and some. So it may be that guy, but I don't know. Probably not, but I couldn't find anything about this guy, Thomas Matheson. Peter Fonda um, must hate this movie, or it would have definitely been restored. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I don't know why. The Hired Hand it's, was restored. I mean, you got a yeah, it's a re-release. very impressive film. Uh, yeah, this given... very low tech. It's very low tech. Yes. Very, it's very naturalistic, and it, it, I like it. it. In, in a lot of ways, but, it's believable because I mean, like, yeah, they they had 
I don't I haven't seen this in years, but you know those things where you punch out the the like the the stickers with has like the letters on it, uh the mm-hmm. plastic strips, that's what's on the machine because it looks because mm-hmm. it's like the it's like this one scientist and like the lead character is his daughter and and like the character who does a lot of the exposition is also his daughter. Um mm-hmm. and like this is all being kept very quiet from the government. It's in it's in the Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho. I think the sign I couldn't recognize is actually showing you that, but it's impossible to read it on the DVD because <laughs> they did take it from a VHS copy. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's not what the sign currently looks like. But I expect just from the similarity to the shape of the look that it, that it that it is an earlier version of the sign. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's basically this this lava field. It's not hot lava. It's just, it's it's old lava, uh, and they they project themselves into the future with this machine and they and they study um the wildlife and plant they're supposed to be like really gifted kids who are like full-fledged scientists which which is a little bit of a yeah, they're all like prodigies they're, yeah they're all prodigies yeah yeah um and it starts out we learn a lot about this character uh, her name is karen and like she was at a clinic before and she got raped and she has very difficult time connecting with people um uh she they even she even said her rapist was a guy named Paul who got transferred out of the clinic after this happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then she's all she gets all like really focused on childbirth, which kind of sets it very much early seventies because her whole she her whole thing things to be on wanting to have babies. Um, yeah, she 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 really wants to be a sexual being, but this whole project is so weird. And and then when you yeah. get the twist toward the toward the third act where they're like, "Well, we're all sterile," and she's like, "What the hell?" And I'm like, "I know what the yeah. hell." What's the point? Yeah, because they thought, yeah, because they, world. yeah, they thought they were going to repopulate this world fifty six years in the future because they haven't found any evidence of people or radio signals. They say they go as far as Aberdeen, but that actually means a town in Idaho. They didn't go all the way to South Dakota, uh, which is how I'm. That's how I interpret it. But it's like it, that can't be it. And I looked it up, and there is not there is an Aberdeen, Idaho, and because they they do talk about going going to portland even though it's 500 miles away mm-hmm. like why don't we try twin falls like it's not worth the risk it's too far out of the way um so that because they, a lot of when the government the government yeah they're all walking uh when yeah. the government finds out about this place they shut it down and they all and a whole bunch of even extra young people go into the future at this point um and well i kind of lost my train of thought <laughs> Well, what I, train what, of thought <laughs> what, confused, what confuses me and I, I think it's interesting is that so with isa her her sister who's yeah. like super super talky exposition person yeah and she gets killed very early on yes and it's really weird she falls it's and really, hits her head and yeah. i think she's not dead but it, the because the the transfer effect tells people she's like the only way she's going to get help is if she goes back to the present but yeah. going back to the present ultimately kills her. That's what killed her, and, and that and that's totally. I think that's what happened. That, yeah, because, that be, makes sense. I thought because, it was, I thought because, she fell off she, the thing. Because hit it well, she, well, when when she comes off, she does fall off and she starts vomiting. I think I think she fell off because she was dead. Yeah, I think she was dying then. Yeah, I th- that makes sense. Yeah. That, that would kill her. Okay. Yeah, because that we are we already know it causes kidney failure later on we find out it causes sterility so this is not a safe process she, she looks like she had a traumatic brain injury like my friend heather because yeah. she slipped on the on the rocks there's a lot of hiking and climbing in this movie like a lot yeah. so if you're into that you'll love it if you're not into that you might be bored i don't know but there's yeah. a lot of hiking <laughs> i mean i'm talking about yeah. no dialogue just hiking for like yeah. a minute or two and you're like okay <laughs> cool they're at the least they're moving you know um but she falls it, it was never head. enough that it ignored that it annoyed me no, I, didn't I, get annoyed just, with I was just thinking how much i'd be incapable of it in my physical condition well, watching it a second time <laughs> critically i can see well third time i can see about the things that would annoy people but it didn't yeah. annoy me no no yeah oh like the thing that annoyed me most is there's a line of dialogue that's a, where where she says you know, as that how they can't wear much because like anything metal will hurt them and they have to they have to like take off anything with zips and, and he's like socks are okay but even when they're being chased they take their socks off before they get on this thing why yeah I, was peter fonda like a foot fetishist or something might be <laughs> yeah I, very, I mean a lot of these filmmakers are so <laughs> he was a it was very fetishistic about about kelly bohannon but it's very it's sly I think if you're, it if is you're a man, sly. I mean, it's a PG a man, movie, but she's like washing her clothes in the sink, and you see like the upper part of her nipples. Yeah, 
and like she'll just t- start taking off the stuff for the thing. It's not lurid. That's just it's, it. It's it really is not much- lurid, but it does let you give. A, it does let you have a. Yeah, look. It, it does let the camera go. Like she's got a very nice shape, and uh, and yeah, I mean she she ends up being shirtless for a bit, and and Robert has to take off her jacket and put in the thing, but he doesn't see her because he's behind. Now her. they have sex that night. Is that the deal? And then he gets kind of weird with her. When he, when she needs I, yeah, to it, it is kind of implied they might have done that. It could just be that he was comforting her, but they do spend the entire night without coming out of the thing. So I think that was the implication was that they had Yeah, sex and then there. he brings up she, and brings she also up she also the one she thinks got her pregnant was Arthur, who's the Keith Carradine character. So. Yeah, she thinks she's pregnant, but she she's not. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Keith Carradine. See, she's fantasizing there. I got with Arthur at one time. And I'm like, how many more story? I mean, about people you got with, you know. I mean, she's she's a horny woman, young woman. Yeah, but it's, these it's people believable. are all under twenty it's years old. It's we not, don't know their like, exact age, yeah. but they're all it's under a, twenty. Yeah, it's not like Cinemax or something. You know, it's not an erotic thriller. It's like they're just you know healthy, robust young people, and you know, you're like, why the hell are they doing this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why are they doing this time travel thing? Well, I mean, if they're not going to repopulate the world. I mean, what are they going to do? Just hike all day? They'll die. Did they ever find yeah. food? They brought food. So yeah, they that's why. Them. But like I said, the one that causes the range focuses on the character goes the range and who goes the range and starts killing people. But you don't. Uh, but you really, don't see. You don't, don't, you don't see all. it. You yeah. don't see it. Karen comes back and finds the dead bodies and finds and gets chased after her with a knife. It is not focused mm-hmm. on that part of the story at all. And then when Karen escapes by by porting back to the present that crazy woman takes her knife and because yeah. she had had it in her pouch on her uh, side and yeah. so the crazy woman is it's really cool because you have two yeah, scenes she, comes, she comes back from the present with a screwdriver and yeah and you've got two characters who are at the exact same location and the one is like waiting for her to come out the psycho and then that's in the future and then the present and it switches so fast i thought Wait a minute! I thought she went in the future. Why is she still there? But yeah, like, the editing yeah, is wild. It's got a lot of like, I, it's got a lot of very fast editing. A lot of handheld camera work. It's really mm-hmm. excellent. You really have um, you really have to use a lot of your brain to cl- use closure, and and I, you know, people have to kind of decide for themselves if they think think it's worth it. But uh, I, I I was intrigued by her character. I think, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of filmmakers would be like, okay, I'm not going to linger on this shot so long. I'm going to give a little more explanation. But I mean, she's she seems like okay yes yeah, she's very horny she's very intelligent and she's she's very depressed and she just kind of cycles through these emotions yeah through this whole thing and it, she, she ends up really using the the technology to save her life you know and so that's really the only real action in the movie but it's cool i mean i like the way it was done but but yeah. then she ends up well. You go ahead. I don't mean it's, it's the yeah. It, it does have a twist ending after she goes into. Well, actually, when they're out there, they do find some people um, they, who are mentally disabled. They call them things like retarded and idiot and stuff. But the but mm-hmm. they're also deaf and mute, which reminded me of beyond the time barrier, which I saw a couple weeks ago because everybody everybody except two of the older people, like a few people and a few people who actually time traveled um, in beyond the time barrier is deaf and mute. And and that mm. also focuses a lot on fertility. Thank you. So Andrew, uh, didn't you telling us about Idaho transfer? Uh, we got cut off yeah. by technological malfeasance. Yeah, I I think I left off. I was talking about how there there's an ecological disaster that takes place in the future, and it, they they use the term echo crisis. So it. And that's how they pronounce it. So it might just slip past you because it's only mentioned one time. Right. At the very Uh, beginning with uh, Issa. Yeah. sister. Okay. We've cut, we covered most of it. So I'll be able to, you know, edit in. Yeah. So, so at, so at the end, we're in kind of the last act. Yes. At the end of the film, um, Karen, um, messes with the machine the machine is is like they have like one person who knows how to work it and they have to recalibrate it on a regular basis it's not like they can just punch in a date and go to that date uh but she does mess with the machine so she'll she'll go further into the future and she fixes it because it was it was not working when the group was there right that's right then she went off because because the government uh, killed the group right but she figured out how to do it she's that little tuna fork Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, le, le, yeah. Leslie had killed the other people uh, because they were using the supplies too much. So, um, and she was deranged. Is, yeah, she was deranged, which is even an alternate title for the film, <laughs> which which tends to play up this arc. I can't get over it's that. Off screen. Oh no, it's like two or three minutes of a woman with a knife and <laughs> tends their advertising on that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we see what she did, but we don't actually see her doing it. <laughs> yeah, um, but so so she recalibrates the machine. She goes further ahead in the future. Uh, she's gone far enough ahead in the future that like all the canteens have uh, really started to crumble. It doesn't even look like rust. It looks like they've like collapsed in on themselves. But this is after she went back to the past or our present one time. Yes, she went back there, and then those people were trying to break in. And yeah, she and went further yeah, into the future. Yeah, she escapes further into the future, and she could, and eventually she, well, she crawls around a lot, and there's, there's a lot of fast editing, so it's really confusing, like where it is. where she where she is because it keep it keeps cutting back to Leslie, uh, waiting for her to come out of the machine with a knife, mm-hmm. um, and she did. And then her life, the her life kind of fl- flashes before her eyes because they yeah. cut in all yeah. of her experiences from the movie real fast. Yeah, so I thought ev- she was about everything. to keel over and die. Yeah, I mean it. It shows Issa's death again. It shows a lot of other stuff from the, earlier in the film, uh, and then sudden, suddenly we see uh, she she gets she makes it to a road, and she she gets grabbed by a guy who's wearing flip flops, which in the seventies was like I. This is a religious <laughs> person. If you watch like films like Soil and Green. Or the Logan's Run TV series, they they had this whole uh, sandals means religious thing, which, mm. interesting. Uh, which I think because it was based on Catholicism and not fundamentalism, uh, mm. which is the which is much of course fundamentalism is much scarier than Catholicism, yes. <laughs> and but but the 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 guy picks her up and he throws her in the back of the car and we find out that they're they're using uh, these people as an energy source uh apparently they're they are the the mentally ill people that they found earlier but they could just be the dead bodies i've seen both come up and they think they think that she's one of them but she's not yeah apparently put her in the trunk when when they put her in the trunk i don't know if he thinks she's dead or not but she does scream yeah she does scream so that that's very it's very confusing and they could care Uh, less yeah they couldn't care less that she's screaming and and then and then this astute little girl who's actually i I wouldn't know she was a girl if the credits didn't say she was a girl, uh, because uh, I she was just really just not really not gender specific at all. I but thought it was said, a boy too. It's okay. But 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 she ends she ends up saying, um, "Well, when they run out of them, they're gonna you're gonna use us, right?" Yeah. <laughs> and, and that and that's like it rolls credits as the car drives away. Yeah. The parents <laughs> are like, "Careful, careful, honey, don't get a moral compass." <laughs> yeah. Watch it there. <laughs> This is not wrong. This is not wrong. Um, I thought maybe they were going to eat them, but but yeah, you're you're right about the energy source. That's that's it. It, it is it is kind of like I think it even hints like that because they talk about thinking one of the snakes got swallowed by one of his buddies, so it's kind of foreshadowed by things like that. Mm-hmm. Because I think it's a weird ending. It's really sad. I think it's a sad. It's very it's kind of a it's sad, a very movie. bleak film. Yeah. Um, she's I don't so, think I don't think it's you know, normal for gopher snakes to eat each other. It may be, uh, <laughs> but if they're desperate for food, they're going to. I mean, there are some kinds of snakes that normally eat snakes, including king cobras. But it's probably a metaphor for just how yeah. desolate it is and how little little life it is, there is. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I just think she's a really cool character. Um, yeah, she's really attractive, but they don't like exploit her sexuality. But her sexuality is actually part of her character because she's yeah, young. Yeah, definitely and she's, is. You know, and she's so frustrated and depressed and can't relate to anybody. I guess she's yeah. the youngest of all of them, maybe. She, she uh, is the youngest. She explicitly loses her virginity through a rape. And then she... And she, then she, Arthur. Then she, then she has Arthur. And then presumably she has Robert. She does spend the right. night in, in the thing with him, although it's not explicit. And um, he's not happy after that with her. He gets yeah. irritated. I'm like, dude, you're more irritating than she is. What, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> And Robert is, of course, the guy who had the, who had his glasses fused to his ears at one point because of the transfer <laughs> process. Yeah, and well, some way to not lose your glasses. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Sear them onto you. I hope this will come out on Blu-ray. It's never been restored. 
at all. Every print yeah. is public domain. It's from VHS onto DVD. Yeah. I, I'm waiting for somebody to do a Blu-ray that looks like crap too, but someone probably yeah. can try to sell one. Cause yeah, because uh, like there there's a scene where it where it closes in on a sign you can't read. And there's mm -hmm. also uh the, the part where the where the hitchhikers leave the car, at least in this DVD edition that I have. There's a big flash of, of like where you know like the tracking thing you so you know unquestionably this came from a VHS. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, not many people I know have seen it. I just stumbled on it like two or three years ago. I can't remember if it was on Amazon or or where, I, but I remember reading about it in the '90s, and that DVD came out oh, I wow. think in 2004. And I had been I had been searching for it on VHS for a long time and never oh, okay. found it. And hmm. I I just happened to see that. In a, it was in a store in Staten Island called Majors Records, and they had they had they had a big bargain rack, and that was on it, and I had to have it. Oh, of nice. course, man. And and Miss Peter Fonda, you maybe he just doesn't like it because I can't think of any other reason. Yeah, he would let it. He would let it just be lost, almost a lost film. But you know, they did do a remaster. I forget which label, but they did do a, a remastered, the re that re theatrical re release and a remastered hired hand by him yeah and that's on blu-ray now i remember when it first came out on dvd and that's a really good movie i've only seen it once but uh yeah. he did a third one you said wanda nevada I've, it's called wanda trouble. nevada i've never seen it it's also it. a western actually you know what i did see it one time on some site i was on and i bookmarked it and then i can't remember if i went back and it was gone or i just didn't go back to that site but i should have just watched it right then and there and now i'm learning with streaming i do it on tubi like every night and if i see one that i've been wanting to see for aeons i'm like okay, i'm gonna watch this right now i may not finish it tonight but i'm, I'm gonna watch this thing. <laughs>